My name is Michael Silva and I'm from Pawtucket, Rhode Island and I am the owner of BASE and we are a traveling cocktail program. So, um, I came up with BASE, the concept of BASE, like uh, at first it was a means to practice. I was working at a bar downtown Providence and one of the bartenders told me that like, yo, in order for you to get better, like what you should do is, you know, just practice on your friends. So what I did was, you know, bought a bunch of spirits, made a bunch of syrups, made the juices and all that, and just invited my boys over to my parents' house where I was living at the time in a basement. And my dad, when he built the basement with his own two hands, he like built in like a bar type counter. So I was literally behind a bar and it was my boys from college, like you know some of them, on some like, yo, look what I can do type shit. And like from that, you know, I did that like once or twice with just my boys and then, then I just started inviting people. And then I started outfitting my parents' basement as like cocktail lounge, you know what I mean? Like, and then really kind of like giving people like something to do. It's nice to bring people together, but also give people something to do in terms of like an exclusivity standpoint, which is kind of like cliche to do like, you know what I mean? Like, no, you can't come drink with us or you can't, I don't ever want it to be like that, but I do want the, I want the consumer to be excited that they're going to something that they just probably didn't know that they were gonna go do, you know what I mean? The name base is the root word, base, it's spelled phonetically, of basement, where we started in the basement. <laughs> and like, I've always been obsessed with the way words look phonetically, because there's a lot of symmetry in it. So it's like kind of cool that it's just three letters with the line above it. And a lot of people don't even know how to pronounce it. They like keep calling it boss and it's like, I get it, but it's like, that, that's an accent, man. Like, had it been, like, if that accent was slanted, people would pronounce it correctly, but then it'd be written wrong. You know what I mean? So it's like, I just gotta like stick with it, you know what I mean? Our mission still to this day is to, is to educate and familiar, familiarize the, an underrepresented demographic in the cocktail culture. That's a mouthful. It's really to put black people onto cocktails and get pe black people comfortable in these spaces that primarily sell cocktails. Everybody knows these places are dominantly white owned and white occupied. And I struggled with that when I was working at a bar because it was like, you know, no one looked like me in front of the bar and no one looked like me behind the bar. And it's like, that's why we started BASE, because like I really wanted to, I knew that there was people who just like me, my age, young professionals who would enjoy something like this, you know what I mean? So for me, it was like, how can I take this whitewash thing or whatever, and how can I get jiggy with this shit? And how can I provide it to my friends? I think about people like my brother who would love some shit like that. And I think about people I went to school with who would love something like this, but it's hard to walk into these predominantly white spaces and have to deal with everything just to get a, a drink. Bringing pe people to these spaces, that's how I feel like we are able to occupy them. Because like, you know what I'm saying? Like, can I swear on this? All right, word. <laughs> Niggas ain't never been to Birch before. You know what I mean? Niggas ain't never been to the Magdalena Room. Niggas wasn't up in Lonely Street. Niggas wasn't up in uh, Justine. You know what I mean? And it's like, and I say that with the utmost like proud that I'm able to, we're able to just bring people to these spaces to let them know that, yo, you guys can come here too. You know what I mean? Like you can come do something different too. And that's, and that's what's really how we've been able to do that. This is our retail space. It's um, four owners, myself, my girlfriend, Millette McFarlane, uh, Tatiana Bayana and Kelly Powers. And it really just is a space for people to be. Now, when we say that, we mean that we want folks to come here and if, you are an author trying to have a book signing or a book reading. You're a poet. You have clothes that you want to sell. You want to shoot a little movie clip. You want to do a podcast here. We want you to come here to use this place as a platform. But our consumers who we're looking after, like we're, we're going after women. We're going after people who look like us. We're going after black and brown folks because we want to provide a platform to those people specifically. Not to say that white folks can't come up in here. You know what I mean? Because that's not the case at all. You know what I mean? But, but we're, what we feel is that we have these resources that we want to share them with the people who we feel have stories to tell. But we want to tap into these people and give them a platform to do their thing. It's important that the owners are who they are too, right? So it's important that one of them is black. It's important that three of them are women. You know what I mean? And it's, it's important that two of those women identify as non-white women. So it's like, it's important, it's important, it's important because we have, we need, there needs to be ownership in these different, different ownership in these spaces and so they can reach out to different demographics and make people feel comfortable.
we want to do is really put people in incongruent spaces, meaning we don't we want you to walk into a place, think that there isn't going to be a cocktail bar, and then like, oh shit, there's a cocktail bar back here. Um, also because like it's important that we're able to, it's really nice to be able to adapt and get comfortable in different spaces. Um, and how we come up with these concepts, how I come up with a lot of these concepts is really about like what stories do I want to tell and how do I want to express that and how do I want to, you know, because it can just be like, I can just put together a menu, whatever the case may be, or just put some drinks out there. But it's like, it's nice that we get to do things with intention because you can get a drink anywhere for you to come get a drink with us means a lot and like we want to give you different reasons to come get a drink with us and establishing relationships with different places other establishments in the city you know and then really just bouncing ideas off one another but a lot of folks are really just letting us tell our story and being a part of that story Noting 100% of the proceeds that we did for the pop-up New Day with my friend's restaurant Barry for George Floyd uh, and Breonna Taylor um, Foundation. Like, the reason why that was important for us and why we did that because like at no point did I want to monetize off of this. Siobhan, who owned the restaurant um, and the person who gave me my, the person who gave me the, let me use the space for my very first pop-up, the one that we like invited people to the world, like out of my parents' basement. So at this time, she's a really good friend of mine and like a mentor too, someone who I look up to. So she tapped us and was like, hey, do you want to do a pop-up here? I'll buy all the booze, whatever the case may be. Um, and you can donate some of the proceeds, whatever, and I was like, the only way I'll do it is 100% of the proceeds go to it. Like, I'm not interested in making money. It was an incredible day, and after we did that, we cleaned house, you know what I'm saying? Like, I made sure that, like, the people who worked for me got paid, whatever the case may be, but, like, I didn't take anything, you know what I mean? Like, but, but everything, we just donated all of it, and then it was like, we walked out, and then we just, the parade was going on that day. I mean, not the parade, excuse me, that's, I misspoke 100% there. The rally was going on that day. And that was the first time that like, that was like the first, first massive, massive one. At this point, the country had been fed up, right? So that was the first, first magic one. And it was so many people in the streets and, it's, and there's just like, you know, there's police everywhere and there's people like, you know, chanting. And it was like, it was hard to like open my mouth and say it because I, it was so much emotion. It was just like, that day was, I'll never ever forget that day. And it's just like, it happened right in my backyard, literally right in my backyard. Like I live right next to the state house. I basically peer into downtown. I'm like, oh, I'll go there now, you know what I mean? Like, so it's literally right in my backyard and we were able to do that in one day and like so much range of emotions and it was crazy. And like, and that's why we were able to do it. So I can stand in that moment. Like that's why you do things like donate 100% of the proceeds so you can be rewarded with such a, like, such a moment like that. You know what I'm saying? Like. It was just like tit for tat in the world. Me and me and whoever's up there was like, yeah, I got you. You know what I'm saying? So it's kind of cool. My favorite cocktail to make is um, a whiskey sour with the egg whites. And that's kind of cool because when you tell someone that you have egg whites in the sour or in the drink, their first reaction is like, no. <laughs> I want Henny, and that's it. <laughs> but when you add the egg whites to it, what it does is it's like it's a protein, so it's basically like you basically it makes it really silky and rich the cocktail, and whiskey goes well with it, and the simple syrup goes well with it, and then like the egg and the lemon, they just go well. You don't taste egg. It's not like you have an omelet in your whiskey. It just makes it feel like almost like a, uh, a milkshake, like a frothy milkshake, but it's a cocktail. And it like, and, it, and, and it's beautiful because like, if you shake, if you do it properly, like once you pour it in someone's glass, there's like a thick, there's like a little layer of white foam that sits on top. And that's perfect for when it's time to garnish. Where I see myself in five years, or where I see base, are like you know, bases myself, Millette, Todd, Christy. Uh, where I see us in five years is still doing what we're saying that we're going to do, and that might look a little bit different because in five years we might have access to more resources, we might have access to, we might have a bigger staff, but how that changes, I still want to be able to tell stories. I still want to be able to bring people together. I still want to be able to 
uh, host different pop-up events. I still want to be able to just be creative, but hopefully in five years, like I'll throw this out there. I've never said this yet. Hopefully in five years, we have our own bar, our own brick and mortar. We have more spaces like booths and hopefully Mixer Cocktails is the number one, <laughs> number one uh, alcohol product, whatever in the industry in five years. What mark do I hope to leave on this industry? What that base should leave? I never thought of that. Um, but I guess what I, I, I mean, to be, to speak about it like that, I think what my, what our legacy should be, what I hope it is, is that we were the first ones who made this industry accessible, who made it like we were able to bring down barriers. We were able to make you comfortable in this industry. We were able to, introduce it to a whole different type of demographic and I feel like that's what the legacy should be is that we made it we made it oh yeah accessible and we got jiggy with it the whole entire time from start to finish it was us because it's for us and by us I feel like I'm recapturing it you know what I mean like it it's ours it's always been ours you know what I mean most of this shit has always been ours so it's like how can we recapture something get jiggy with this shit stay true to who we are and you know educate folks on where all this stuff comes from that knowing that it comes from folks that look like you and I and it's like that's where I feel like the legacy should be that we are able to do all of that and still be jiggy with it <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The advice that I would give to my younger self or to any young person is to um, is to take your time and, and, and be patient and put the work in. Sometimes it means putting your work, putting your head down and just getting to work. And then some days you feel like you're wasting time or you threw it away. But if, if you just put the work in and put the time in and be patient, like you'll find it. And it can be anything, right? And I think to me, it is being happy and being, and like people throw that word around all the time. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to be happy and I just want to be free. But like, I really just want to wake up and do what I want to do. And to me, that makes me happy, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it's like, be patient with it. I remember wanting stuff so bad before. And also not, and also being like, also like be real with yourself, bro. Like, you're a kid, the world doesn't owe you anything. You barely, have, what have you done in the workforce? What have you done? How have you contributed? So these things will happen naturally. Like, not everyone gets to be P. Diddy's son. Not everybody gets to be, you know what I mean, uh, rich or whatever, all these, you know, have money like that. So it's like, we, we bat ourselves up against these things that are just really unattainable. But it's like, what isn't unattainable is being patient, working hard. So when you do finally get your moment, you can step into it and you can realize that it is just about waking up and doing whatever you want to do. Yo, my name is Michael Silva and I'm part owner of BASE. We are a traveling cocktail program, meaning we put people in incongruent places and, serve and pop up as a cocktail bar. So if you're walking into a three-story walk-up, the oldest diner in the country, a library, laundromat, you name it, you're gonna find a cocktail bar. Our Instagram is BASPVD um, and also follow at Mixer Cocktails and that is MXR Cocktails. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to my partner, Millette. Um, without her, I wouldn't be doing any of this. She's standing right over there. I also want to give a huge shout out to my friend, Christy, who's literally been with me since day one of this. Um, a huge shout out to Todd, who's got my back through thick and thin. Um, also a huge shout out to uh, Eddie, Nick, Nick, Christian, uh, all of the low key guys, the hottest DJs in the city of Providence. Um, and uh, my parents and my friends and everyone who supports what we're doing.